Good evening, good evening. Um, let's come in and say good evening so that's one of which and then uh, we'll start in the meantime. Let's um, enjoy the music while people are coming in. Uh, you're welcome. This is Innis Grace and Mercy. I am Dr. Kekana. I am Pastor Kekana. We, we welcome you. While you edit, please uh, invite other men and women so that we can have a proper discussion there. Uh, please share um, here with others. Thank you. Good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, ah, thank you, thank you. I've got an MK team behind me here. They're making sure that uh, things are going well. Thank you. Um, good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let, um, I think uh, we can start. Abanye Bazos uh, Thank you very much. This is CD uh, Bank Marines. Um, Beautiful music, beautiful music. Um, they call themselves Germany. Um, I think we're going to start and then we will have um, the questions and answer session later um, after Dr. Guliza has um, 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 made his presentation. But I think, uh, like as usual, let's open with a prayer and invite God to be part of us and uh, to uh, enlighten us. And above all, that we do this under his umbrella. In, um, in his great name, in the name of Jesus Christ. In God's name, dear Lord, this evening again, once more, we thank you amongst the living, dear Lord. You're an amazing God, and we never can never thank you enough. We can never even try to repay you enough, dear Lord. Be with us this evening as we are about to teach, educate, 
uh, your nation, dear Lord. Be with us that we enlighten them and we give them the information that will help them, dear Lord. And most of all, they must remember this is coming to them all in a good name, in the, no the name of Jesus Christ. And as we pray that you touch each and every person connected here as life and you change their life, that we know that after each and every session that we learn something, we can never be the same again. We pray and we ask for your presence and your Holy Spirit to be with us. We pray and we ask in Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Um, good evening, good evening, good evening. Um, today, once more, um, I'm with um, uh, one of the doctors that familiar faces um, on the ministry, and we really, again, thankful um, to have him join us again and uh, educating us. Uh, last week, we were talking about um, abnormal uterine bleeding, and then we had um, Dr. Masina educating us this week. We have Dr. Guiliza, who's going to talk about erectile dysfunction. This topic is very important. You better share with other people, you know, um, because in Jay, um, yeah, plus now it's it's winter and Jay, we are having a lot of requests uh, and um, and we need to know what the issue is so that we can, um, you know, people can get a better um, and the uh, uh, appropriate help. So in my corner, I've got uh, Dr. Guiliza that I'm going to let him uh, introduce himself. And Gritas uh, is a, a good friend of mine, he's a urologist, um, he specializes in these things. So the hotel, I greet uh, um, the viewers and the family at home, and then we can uh, we can start. Over to you, sir. Uh, the hotel, can you hear me? Uh, evening, everyone. Yeah, bo. yeah, now yeah. I can hear you. Um, evening, everyone. Uh, oh, thank you. As Dr. Kekan uh, said, I'm Dr. Kuliza. Uh, I'm a urologist um, based at one military hospital and also in private at uh, Heart Hospital and um, uh, from uh, the Eastern Cape and Tata. So it's good to be here today and then just talk about a very important topic, um, the irritable dysfunction. So then hopefully yeah. we're going to get uh, good discussions at the end of the, it's a very short talk and hopefully we're going to get more discussion than me talking. Yeah, uh, thank you. I'm hoping that too. Um, um, so when, when people ask questions, we're not going to say you are asking for yourself. Uh, you can also ask for somebody else, you know. So don't be shy. Um, this, this is for you. And uh, you need to then ask, because later on, when you go and see this man in his uh, uh, private practice, he's going to charge you. So I'm going to project your presentation, the hotel, and then from there, um, you will take us through. Um, I, I also love the, um, uh, the picture that you depicted there, okay. but I hope uh, you will, <laughs> you will, uh, you will allude uh, to that. Over to you, the hotel, we are, we are listening. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, as we've mentioned that uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, erectile dysfunction, which is actually quite a common uh, problem. And pe many people may feel embarrassed to go for help. However, I mean, um, with uh, our the healthcare system currently and how we deal with this, things that's actually quite improved and evolved in the, also the treatments and then the side effects on, on treatments have really improved. So there is help out there. You can move. Okay. You can, uh, I'm here. Okay. So as we all know, uh, people who suffer from uh, irritable, dysfunction, the irritable dysfunction will have it decreased, it, it decreases the life, it decreases work pro productivity. So it does have an impact on your whole life, even at work, the stresses that are coming from home. So actually it's a two-way street. Stre stresses that at work will make, can make um, worsen the irritable dysfunction and the irritable dysfunction actually um, has an impact on your work productivity. And then most importantly, 
it can be a warning sign for other medical conditions because uh, we We know that uh, most people who have erectile dysfunction, so basically their blood flow to the penis is has decreased because of uh, things like uh, atherosclerosis, uh, um, like uh, what you call like uh, cholesterol that who smoke, patients who has diabetes, uh, diabetes also have vascular problems, and then. Basically, the, the diagram there at the bottom showing at um, diameters of different arteries. And then, contrary to popular belief, the smallest there is actually the one that is supplying uh, the penis. And then, the largest one will be the one that's supplying the feet. So, what will happen then if you've got vascular diseases? The one supplying the penis may be the one that. That's going to be occluded. I think they are also going to be uh, occluded, such as the vessels to the heart, leading to heart, um, heart attacks, to your brain, uh, leading to strokes, or the kidneys leading to kidney failure, and, and also to your feet ending up with um, ending up with amputations. So that is one of the most important things, that it may be a warning sign for other diseases. Therefore, we should take it quite seriously. You can move to the again. The World Health Organization really says, um, when it's trying to tell us what is uh, health. So it does say that health is a state of a complete physical, yeah. mental, and social world being and it's not just a mere absence therefore is uh, one sexually not healthy then that really even if your whole other body is healthy but then the, that means there is a problem so what would be the causes of erectile dysfunction one psychological and then i think in the past few years we've really been dealing um, uh, with a whole lot of about me, the topic that has previously been neglected. General health status. Therefore, if you're really not in a well space, generally you are sick with other things, you will get ir uh, irritable dysfunction. Common things like diabetes. But I must say that diabetes on its own is not necessarily um, erectile dysfunction, heart problems, hormonal problems, uh, smoking. Uh, smoking is one of the biggest causes of many diseases. Uh, and then again, it does cause vascular diseases, drugs, medication. And then we all cannot. We're all not gonna run away from uh, from aging, and then just a few stat statistics on that. That actually, um, people who are below the ages of forty, about less than ten percent of them would experience erectile dysfunction. But as the age creeps up, between forty to forty nine, we're looking at about fifteen percent. Then, once we reaching 60, 60 years of age, more than. 35 to 40 percent of people will have erectile dysfunction. How to prevent erectile dysfunction? Exercise, healthy eating, and then remember, healthy eating is not expensive eating. Maintenance of good weight, as as I've mentioned it, controlling of diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, avoiding smoking. If you do drink. moderate drinking. I, I know most of us, we use glasses that are prescribed per day, we'll keep them for the weekend, and then we'll binge drink over the weekend, which is also not a good way of consuming. Um, and then also remember, whatever you 
whatever is good for your heart, what the doctors tell you is good for your heart, is also good for your penis. <laughs> okay, move, doctor. Yeah. Again, before we move on, um, just to say that most men have normal sexual function, but abnormal sexual expectations. So this really speaks to what often we expect in, in terms of um, uh, the sex, because when as we, we grow older, things may change as is for whom the truth, and that may cause anxiety uh, among, within us, and then that then causes sexual dysfunction. Treatment, again, it's all those preventative things, exercise, healthy eating, healthy lifestyles. If there's any psychological problems, psychotherapies, we need to go and look for the underlying cause. If it's high blood pressures, that um, uh, uh, high blood pressure, we need to control that. Diabetes, we need to control it. If it's hormonal problems, we need to replace those. And then remember, then the next thing will be oral medications. Things such as uh, your know, Viagra and your Cialis, those are things that you, we, we're using, which have actually um, had such a great impact on how, on the management of uh, erectile dysfunction. And then um, Viagra, for interest, it only came uh, at about it was only uh, approved in 1998, while the Cialis is in 2003. So these uh, patients with erectile dysfunction. Then once the oral treatment and your lifestyle medications are not have not really worked, then you can move on to things such as your injections that a person before uh, engaging in sex, then they will have to inject themselves as shown in the picture in, into the penis. And then that, then another prob another one would be moving to um, operations. So operations that we can do would be uh, as shown in the picture there that we put Um, implants inside the penis. So if you want on your on the left side of the screen, it's, it will be a three piece. It will have a pump that will be in the scrotum and then high up and then there's a tube that will be into the penis. And then when you want to engage in sex, you then uh, squeeze the pump, then the water goes in and then er erection comes and then can engage in sex and then afterwards you press the button and then the fluid moves backwards and then the penis will go down or you can have the ones on the on the other on the right side of the screen those ones you can see they're always rigid but you can then bend the the implant uh, if you if not in use and when in use you, you just um, straighten it and then you can engage in sex. Huh? And then lastly, um, you must always remember the penis does not obey an order from its master who tries to erect or shrink it at will. The penis must say to have a mind of its own. I think this is usually very important because um, at times people will often ask, you know what, after one round, I can't get it up again. And then I often say, you know, if you are sitting there, I mean, that it really becomes a problem. I mean, you start uh, saying all your claim names, which is Pagama Kabazela, 
Oh, it's you, oh, buddy. No, it's okay. I'm, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> It's okay, don't tell us what you step you you can go on. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. I I could I could, I could contain myself, but anyway, it's, it's okay. Uh you can go on, you can go on over there. Yes, over there. No, 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 I do that one. You can move. As I've mentioned, uh, the talk on the talk uh, talk on uh, that we need to. It's more of a discussion than of me giving a lecture. So we're just gonna then have some discussions now. But then I just put this slide because um, again, uh, you know, um, many people don't know the the, the work that a urologist does, a urologist do, and then um, so I've put the. Because most often we people often think of a urologist as a as a gynecologist for men, but we're not gynecologists for men. Um, we do look after kidneys, which both of us men. Do. We men have yeah. we look after bladders, things of actual health, and then things and then also doing things like. such as circumcisions. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Move to the next slide. Yeah. I think Thank you. Questions. Yeah. Um, let's let's do this. Thank you. Uh, so thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, you know, uh, sorry, I couldn't uh, I couldn't uh, contain myself. For those that just joined us, when the doctor is still busy, thank you for joining us. We are really discussing erectile dysfunction. Uh, so the, the penis has a, has a mind of its own. It doesn't obey the master to try and share it at will. It always has a, the, the mind of its own. Even when you want it to get up, sometimes it does its own thing. Anyway, thank you very much for that brief and uh, actually, you know, um, a, um, you know, informative um, presentation. I've got a few questions for you um, before we deal with the questions that are gonna come through if the questions do come through. But if you have a question, we're talking erectile dysfunction today um, and uh, you are welcome to um, ask a question. But remember, if you catch this later, you can still later on uh, send in a question, whether tomorrow or whatever, we'll be able to see the question and we will redirect it appropriately. And then we'll be able to get an answer for you, whether it's an uh, inbox or whichever way or just on the platform itself, but we'll be able to answer because this is this, we need to acknowledge that this is a serious topic and uh, it's a sensitive topic too. Um, but I want to ask you, I want to say this, you know, just to reemphasize what you said, that um, the, the age itself is something that people cannot run to. So with age, which is what I said earlier, with age, you find that you, the, the likelihood that you have erectile dysfunction are there because of simply because of age, not because that you are sick. So one must be aware of that. And one thing that he also said is that we, we usually say that what is good for your heart is good for your penis. But I used, I used to say, if you don't have the heart for it, you won't have the balls for it. So if, if you're not looking after your heart, there is no way that your penis will function normal. And that's why a exercise is more important. And just to also give you stats, is that most people are dying from heart attacks and strokes. And simply because they can prevent that on the level of exercise. So if you cannot walk without having a shortness of breath, or you cannot climb a, a, you know, staircases without you having problems, then you need to worry about that because definitely you'll have issues when it comes to erection and you taking medication at the go without fixing the course it's a problem and and what i knew under graduation undergrad before i went back is that the caliber of um, the vessels that go supplies your penis it's the same size as the vessel that supplies your heart so if the one that supplies your heart is blocked there could be other issues elsewhere if the legs is giving you problem because of a blood supply, the issue could be everywhere. Get checked, 
go to appropriate specialists like what Dr. Guliza, and they will look at you as a whole and then treat um, the courses. But I want to ask you, I saw that um, um, you showed us this um, gadgets magic, yeah, that you, you, you can, the implants that you have with the pump in the scrotum, in the reservoir, in the, uh, in, uh, just, uh, in the lower abdomen. When you have this implant, first question is this, what would be the indication for a person to have that implant and then what would be a subsequent uh, follow up question on that is that can, can you can you orgasm with that uh, with that uh, gadget magic and uh, is there any limited time of use per day or e why are why am for it over to you to order. Thank you. Remember, um, with those gadgets, eh, you still would need all. Though you you're gonna use the pump to pump, most of the time the glands will not will, will not be erect, be just from that. Uh, but that the the erection from the glands will come from desire of sex. And then that is where most of the sensitivity is. Also the skin around the penis, that's where the sensitivity is. Therefore, yes, you will orgasm. Yes, you you do if you do um get the, the same feeling for those who would be that have failed other management with other um, treatment um, um, uh, your cover checks, your injections. Okay. So 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 you're saying that you you will and then I just, outline just for me. Speaking. Mm -hmm. I was saying, I outlined for me, where would you start? Somebody comes with erectile dysfunction, would you start by that implant or you start by medical treatment and then you go to injections or and then you go to operations? How would you stepwise just uh, briefly? Yes. So, so the stepwise approach is always first, we need to investigate. Is yeah. there a cause that we can remove? And then remember, yeah. um, I think uh, they, we had also mentioned that there's certain medications that may be prescribed by a doctor that can yeah. cause erectile dysfunction. I think the most common yeah. uh, medication would be things like your medication for your hypertension. It could be medication, mm -hmm. uh, psychiatric drugs for anti-depression. Anti Th those treatments can cause irritable dysfunction. However, just for caution, if we do know those who can be offending agents, doctor has given you one of those, and then you do then experience irritable dysfunction, you must not stop them on your own. You need to go back to the doctor, say, listen here, ever since you've prescribed this tablet for me, a So yeah. that he can then check, swap it for another one. Grab hypertensive medication, then you stop it. Then you may end up now with a stroke or with a problem. Your disease may not be uh, well managed. So that's the first place. Second yeah. thing is healthy uh, mod modif modifying your, your 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 lifestyle. Things like your exercising, yeah. healthy eating. Uh, removing or smoking. Then we got your Viagra, yeah. your Cialis. After that, we mm -hmm. can move to, or oh, before that, actually, there's one that I didn't put up there, would be your a, a vacuum, vacuum devices. So which yeah. you, you put the vacuum device in, in, you put your penis in the vacuum device. It's... Uh, which will make an erection. And so those devices can also be used. Then you can go for your injectables. Then from there yeah. onwards, we can then go and do operations. Yes. Okay. So, and then this would be, and I'm just looking, there's some, 
I can't hear you. You're saying that? you saying what? Hello? Those gadgets would not... Um, yeah, okay. I'm saying, okay. as you see, so I'm saying that you will get orgasm, and then and I'm just looking, there's a question there on, do the gadgets affect the ability to impregnate, and then those would not? Yeah. And then another thing would be, what's the difference between ED and impotence? It's, it's um, those are the same, but what would be different would be uh, ED or impotence and libido. So basically, ED and impotence is inability to get an erection, or to maintain an erection. Those would yeah. be those two. Whereas some people will have a low libido. So a low libido means just means uh, you just don't feel like sex. Or yeah, or you just don't feel like it. Uh, so that would be a decreased libido. So those would be so 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 um, you're saying that uh... Libido, Sorry, I think you, I think you, I think I think think you network... have answered. Oh, sorry. Oh, I sorry to disturb. I think the network was on about the age. Yeah. Okay. So I think yes. um you you say sorry we didn't pick you up there that well um because your network you could pick a nine lap. the 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 the, the erectile dysfunction and impotence are the same thing. Okay, Poppy. Uh, e e erectile dysfunction. Uh, erectile dysfunction impotence. Okay. Yes. So I uh, was saying erectile dysfunction impotence. We can classify them as one, because those yeah. really talk about failure to get an erection or to maintain an erection. To maintain. Okay. Yeah. Problems with libido. So a libido would be you just don't feel like. You do not feel like having sex, so oh, Khalid, to have sex, you understand. Whereas with impotence and with your irritable dysfunction, the heart is there. You want to to do it, but then the main member is failing. Okay, I I, I hear you. So now, um, you showed an and implant. I think that, that another it... question you have answered. Yeah, that, yeah, the issue of age. I think you had. So, but the, the but issue they, of, they... of age, it's uh, yeah. the older we become. I didn't get that. Okay, that's fine. I was you saying the older you become, but what what is what is that age that somebody must start you know being on the lookout for or to be to be comfortable and say yeah no I have erectile dysfunction because it's aging. So what age is it? Is it that this is prominent? I think that's what she's trying to mm. get to. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So we know that people below the age of forty, although you can get erectile from before the age of forty, but then it, it's not that much prominent below the age of forty, but it increases. Then by the time you hit the 60s, actually the majority of people will have some form of sexual uh, dysfunction at that age, by that age. Then 70s and 80s, then uh, uh, then it's really hitting almost 90% of people in those age. Okay, so if, if somebody's at the age of 60 or 50, and then, and then they have erectile dysfunction due to aging, um, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you giving them medication to go on? Some they are still on top of the game and they still want to um, engage more uh, 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 with the partner. Would you then say, you know, it's age, we're not going to treat it or you are going to, you are going to treat it um, so that the, the man can go on? Yes, of course we're going to treat it. So, because I'm, uh, because it is still, it's part of the well-being of of the person so we do need to treat so we can't just dismiss it as age related yes the cause okay. is the age however we can still help with the with all the um, that we have so so the people will still be helped 
Okay, good. So, so just just for interest sake, to to what age are you going to treat it with medication, or to what to what age would you treat it? Do, do can you treat the erectile dysfunction to the grave, uh, doctor? I mean, uh, not all eighty-year-olds are the same. You get eighty-year-olds, seventy-year-olds, which are relatively. fresh so okay. and then you you then they also physically good then you can treat and remember remember okay. uh, there's always there's always the, the partner that we must always consider which i think also did not come in the in the in the presentation that yeah. how, the issue is always how old is the partner Now, yeah. what's the sexual functioning of it's between two people you understand therefore you need to look the, the the sexual functioning of the partner because sometimes you find that it's two 80 year olds then you find that they really do not want to to be engaging in sex anyway but sometimes you find that someone is 80 with a young wife who's 40 or 50 you understand so you need to really help the guy Okay, uh, I'm gonna address that question now. But there's something that I wanted to ask you that I want before we, we get to uh, Margaret's question. And uh, you know, if ladies who are asking these questions, you know, um, but anyway, I knew it's gonna happen like that. You, you, on your presentation, one of the courses that you said on top, yeah, you said you said psychological well being of a person, you know, um, and a general health. So, 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 do, when somebody comes, do you try and interrogate the state of well-being in terms of mentally um, before you start treating? Because, because Mkampe, the issue with the having an erection is that they are not psychologically in a in a good standard with their partner. Mkampe, let's give an example. Mister Lani, when a, and a partner is saying harsh things to the person, or they are not, they are not, you know, a and then and then. And then that is that would be the cause of a person. Obviously, that would be a person cause of a person not having erectile dysfunction. Do, so, do you interrogate the psychology first before you treat them, or because in jail they want to yeah. uh, to get to action and start shooting without fixing the mind? You 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 give them the power to fix to shoot. I mean, yes, no, definitely you need to to interrogate all those questions. Because remember, remember, especially when people are living together, uh, you meet and then you see a, a phone call from your significant other, and then you get excited, and then on the phone call you just says, "Hey, we in a song, we in a song, you know, it it becomes an administrative uh, thing. So they, so you need to. Uh, engage in those issues, the issues in, in the relationship, what's happening in the relationship. And then sometimes we may not, as urologists, be well, um, that, that's why that I said, then we may refer to um, psychologists who may be well versed to in treating such, uh, such, such, uh, such, such problems. Because then, I mean, then you get people that often would, would talk about um also what you call situational irritable dysfunction uh, yes whereby uh eh? whereby there's irritable dysfunction maybe at home but there's no ed at the neighbors when you go when you jump the fence to the neighbor there's no e there's no irritable dysfunction so so you see the the problem is more on the it's a situational problem yeah so, so that that one would need a psychologist if the situational problem. Guti now so jumpy fence. Uh, what what is the difference between uh, AMS seven hundred and AMS uh, eight hundred? Okay, the the main difference uh, between the two number one. Okay, the, those are done. Um, those come from the same company. So, but, but, so, so well, what is it? What is oh, it? Because. Let's because start, some, yeah, some of us who don't know what this AMS is, you know. Yeah, yeah. 
let's go back. It's uh, if you look at that at the picture that um, that we had, um, then we had what was called the gadgets. There was the one that, yeah. that you 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 had the um, what do you call it. Um, you had uh, the pump, and then it had a, a water reservoir. It had a pump, and then it um, uh, implants. So, the the main difference, okay, number one, the implants when they come, um, we've got different generations of implants. There's yeah. that picture, yes. So. You've got uh, different generations, like everything else, it has to keep imp improving. And then you also have uh, different sizes. The third, the third uh, yeah. thing, you, you get others. So this, the one that is shown there, it's, it's called the three-piece one. And then you can get one that is more of a of two-piece. So there will not be no reserve in the... Um, um, you not then you're not getting the reservoir. The reservoir would be at the back of the cylinders. Yeah. Okay. So basically, um, the, most of the difference is really on the most of the difference is mostly on the on on different generations. The sizing and then also whether it's a trip. Okay, um, so 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 are you are you okay? So I'm gonna let me let me let me just simply stop sharing that, and then we 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 we, we continue. So just like any other gadget, so there's, so, so I, I suppose the 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 uh, AMS eight hundred is much more better than the than the seven hundred. Is that what you're saying? No, no, the, no, no, no. Uh, there's uh, like like many things. It's not about this one is better. It's all about the fit, the fitment. You look at the indications for that particular patient, because you know most most of the time if you're gonna do implants like that, someone would, would say, "Listen, I want the biggest." But then you can only put what because one it will look what irritable dysfunction the irritable bodies of the patient uh, uh, he had scarring maybe he had um and then the scarring there so for that so for such a patient you cannot really put a bigger device so it all depends on the indication for that particular patient at that particular time okay. Okay. Um, what what is before I go on with these other questions? What is the durability? So if you have an implant, um, after how long do you need to change it? Can you can you can you keep us for for forever? Can I can I have somebody who's younger, maybe who's twenty, to put an implant if they want to? Let's say for 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 for, for the sake of uh, the, the question, somebody who's younger can put an implant because they they have some some mm. issues. With the with the nerve conduction or something, then the, what is durability that they need to go and resave it again or, or or recheck it again? Over to you. Yes, like like many things, nothing really lasts forever. So the durability of these implants is is usually about eight years. That's the first thing. And eight years. Then I think uh, what didn't come true cost quite a lot of money. Um, the ones that are just one piece that don't have any mechanisms, they're much cheaper. We, we, we're really looking at about seventeen thousand uh, between fifteen and twenty thousand. And then the other mechanism, the one with um, the AMS devices, then you're looking at um, anything between seventy and eighty thousand rands. Yeah. Okay. However, uh, however. Okay. I think currently, currently as times are changing, and then we really need to put uh, the issue of irritable dysfunction as a problem, uh, not a, just a problem, but it is a condition that's really affecting people. 
so now mo, there are medical aids after really need to move after motivation who would pay for for such um for these implants but however i mean it's still work in progress in terms of having uh medical aids paying for these implants okay um the i i i i There, there, there is a what can you say to people who prefer um, a scene to over to you? Uh, sure. Over to you, don't no comment. Um, I think, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> um, you know, erectile dysfunction is as old as mankind and. It's one of those things that from east to west, from south to north, people have really for thousands of years been trying to get uh, something to get. Wherever you go, there's some traditional, whether you go to Asia or you go to Africa, or you go to, there's always some traditional things that people say this really works. But um, I think there are things that are being looked at, but I think um, uh, I will, I will <laughs> shy away from saying. Uh, he's uh, he's he's shying yes, away. You know, you know, you know, you so, know when you when when, yes. when you're a doctor, you because I think yes, I think because I I, I, I would want to. Once we, we don't know the science behind certain some of these um some some of uh, of in those scene too, and then and then say as but so most of sometimes you get people who use uh, prolonged erections um to casualties and then which they need yes. we, then we need to take the erections down in casualties. Or going to theater just to get the erections down. So uh, pe uh, people do get, and then sometimes people who have used some of this traditional medication, they come with kidney failure. And yeah. so they, they, so the because some of them you don't know exactly the compounds that are with them, and then the dosing and all of those things. So it's really a difficult one to say. Yeah, uh, just to just 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 to add, you know, um, there are certain things that were not tested, where whether they are working or what, it's uh, it's uh, due to experience or or somebody have used them, but it's difficult to to advocate something that you don't know the mechanism. And indeed, I've seen two young men long time ago as an intern down in Whitbank Hospital that came in after many hours. Of having an erection and now it's painful because now the erection is in a way that if it's prolonged you can actually lose your your penis because of that and some of them had to be tra be transferred as far as coming this side in pretoria when i was still an intern you know to 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 be treated there because uh, because they didn't have a urologist who can help them at that time and, and some had to lose their penis in the process so it's possible so as you use these things, they, we don't know the mechanism. You don't know the mechanism. You don't actually know the dosages of what you're taking. But you know, back by school, you know, something that is so dark. You don't know how it works. I'm not trying to speak ill. I don't understand it. And I wish maybe next time we can get people ever seen to that are using this. You know, last time we had a topic, we invited them. They shied away from educating us about things that they do. It's more sacred, so we, 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 you know, they don't allow us to ask them questions. But I, but, but nonetheless, thank you for answering that. Uh, Ufida said, "Kanti ni nama tota ni twele ganzi ma." So askis, and then U, uh, uh, Doctor uh, uh, Mahape Ruth says, "Why do men shy away from addressing this problem openly?" Look, a, um, I can tell you that men. Don't want to talk about this thing, Justin J. That is why even some men, you know, wouldn't want to talk about the erectile dysfunction with the women. 
and uh, they wouldn't even want to be examined by a woman. So for, most people don't even tell their partners that they have erectile dysfunction. They just go to go to the corner and try to fix the problem so that they can uh, come back and and still you know sound or look or perform the same, which um, at some point it doesn't work. But I think you have answered this. Does medical aid does uh, medical aid pay for these implants? And I think some don't pay for them, and I don't know if some do really pay for them at the present moment. But last time I checked, they were not paying for the for the implants. Yeah, I think um, it depends on, on on the on the indications and motivations and on your medical aid. Yeah. Okay, so it's not it's not an obvious thing that they pay. It depends on so many things. Yes. And uh, yeah, it depends. No, it um, depends on, I, yes. Yeah. So I think we have exhausted all the questions we had, and I hope people got educated um, um, uh, when it comes to to this. And um, I would like to thank you. Any um, parting shots from yourself uh, before see Vala Lenda? Um, like uh, from the introduction, that uh, one. Um, we should not shy away from seeking help because uh, there is help. Uh, things have really evolved in the past um, couple of years, in the past 30 years or so, in terms of management of irritable dysfunction. So there is help out there. That's the first thing. Second thing is we must always remember that irritable dysfunction is a vascular problem till proven otherwise. So if yeah. you've got a irritable dysfunction, we really need to ensure that there is no other vascular problems that will then lead you to, to things like a heart attack and strokes. So it can really be a warning shot. The other question, the how can a woman help to deal with erectile dysfunction? Question, how can... A Yes, I think um, the issue is um, sex is, a, is an issue between two partners. Therefore, you really need to be in a healthy relationship to, to look at the, the relationship itself. You need to be healthy. Uh, someone really need to, you need to really become, remember also, you must not uh, cause extra anxiety around around sex. <laughs> I think okay. that's way um, it can. Does the size of the penis affect the erection? <laughs> no. Uh -uh. Okay. 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 Um. And uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Dr. I thank you. I go. I thought. I. 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 hope you got the answer. Ooh, ooh, Dr. Nube as well. Uh, since Brenda Kunzim, uh, Kunzim, I agree with you, and uh, I think um, we have um, came to the end of our um, discussion with Dr. Quiliza, and uh, we'd like to thank you once more for availing yourself uh, to educating us. Um, just, uh, uh, I want to read a statement that you put there that uh, that cracked me. Uh, just again, for those that missed the statement, it says, the penis does not obey the order of its master, Onkosia, who tries to erect or shrink it at will. Mm -hmm. The penis must be said to have its own mind. Leonardo da Vinci, close quote. Uh, I agree uh, with that. And, uh, and that's what made me crack that it has a mind of its own. Um, uh, so I think um, without, uh, 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 yeah, no, I, 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 uh, I agree, um, uh, my brother, that's my younger brother. I, I agree that it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's quite important because uh, you realize that uh, part two. We will discuss that with the MK team, but we can organize a part two. Kuliza is my friend. We, we can organize that at any time. And, uh, he's, uh, he, he, yeah, yeah, no, we, we, and, we, we, we need to organize. And I think, and, I think, Mzi, we need to organize this with... And, and people must... Yeah. 
and people must always remember that the, the good Lord for sex didn't only give them the penis. They've got uh, 10 toes, 10 fingers, a tongue. And a penis. So there's 22 instruments. Yeah. That, thank you very much. Wow. Thank you. So I think, Z, we, we must, uh, we must uh, when, we, when we do our men's uh, meetings and everything, we, we must uh, invite you, Dr. Guliza, because last time I attended this meeting, the men were really, um, really needed a solution and they really asked me about erectile dysfunction, you know, because that's a topic that we're discussing all the time when people know that you're a doctor, even when you are there for a church or pastor's meetings, the pastors and the congregations are wondering if you own a umlilo in your pocket just to 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 make what it is into. Anyway, thank you very much. We'd like to thank you, Dr. Guliza, and uh, we thank you very much. And I'd like to thank the MK team for organizing such a talk. Uh, if there's in any other questions, allow me to bid you goodbye um, in an MK team style um, this evening again. We thank you. We love you. I am Dr. Kekana, a.k.a. Pastor Kekana. We love you. We appreciate you. Let's meet on Sunday. And I'd like to thank my beautiful team, the MK team, for such a wonderful job. I'd like to thank you. Have a good evening. We love you. And be safe. Consult before you try to keep warm. <laughs>